Hi, I'm Claire King, head of culinary at Traeger, and I'm excited to show you how to use the new induction cooktop on the all new Timberline. Before we get started, I'm gonna take off this lid, which helps protect the induction when it's not in use. It sits right behind here in this handy shelf, which also works as a backsplash to protect anything around the grill from grease splatter. Uh, say your grill's up against your house, for instance. I'm gonna remove it though for the rest of the demo. All right, so first things first, you should make sure that your cooktop is connected to your grill via Bluetooth connection. And the cooktop is connected via the same accessory menu as the meat probes. You'll know you're connected when it's just a solid light on the ring light right by the Bluetooth icon. If it's blinking, it's telling you it wants you to do something, it wants you to connect to the Bluetooth. Connecting your cooktop will allow you to see the cooktop setting on your Traeger app as well. Um, so if you're ever confused about the lighting, uh, the app will give you a lot more guidance on where you are and what you need to do. The first thing you should know about cooking with induction is that it's actually a technology that transfers heat directly to the pan, not exactly the surface. Uh, this makes it a much more efficient form of cooking. Um, you don't have as much bleed, for instance, like you would with gas. This means you can turn it up all the way, but the surface won't get hot unless there's a compatible material on top. The induction cooktop will run a pan check for you, and that's the best way to determine if your pan is compatible or not. So if you place a non-compatible pan on the surface, the light ring will turn white, travel up and down for three seconds before turning off. Now I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks for direct cooking. Hotter is not always better. I'm gonna talk through a few common uses and show you the best setting for them. First, let's say you've got some ribs on the Traeger and you wanna baste with a warm sauce. Place a compatible saucepan directly on the cooktop and turn the setting to no higher than two. You just want the sauce to be warm so it won't get thick and congeal on your ribs. Any higher will burn the sugars in your sauce. Just a simple simmer. Uh, we really just want to warm the sauce through. The great thing about induction is it keeps a really gentle low heat as well. Um, so we won't risk burning the sauce, especially if we're keeping it that low. It'll be a perfect complement to your smoked ribs. One of my favorite things to make is a big mess of caramelized onions. And doing this on the induction is really, really easy. And I like to do these on like a level four. So I want it high enough that I can caramelize a bunch of those sugars in the onions, but I don't want to burn them too much. Um, a good thing too, whenever I'm caramelizing onions, is sometimes you'll get some of the sugars kind of catching on the bottom of the pan. Um, and this is actually great for caramelized onions, and the best thing to solve that is using a little bit of water and then scraping the bottom, getting some of that fond up from the bottom of the pan. Uh, and that just makes that color and the richness of the caramelized onions really come through. So when in doubt, whenever your onions are sticking a little bit to the bottom, just pour a little bit of liquid and all that liquid will burn off and give it like a really nice creamy texture to the onions. One of the things we are most excited about with the Timberline is having the ability to deep fry. It's a great solution for your grill because deep frying can create, frankly, like a ton of mess and a ton of smell as well. So bringing this outside is like absolutely the best case scenario. Um, when you're deep frying, I'd say like kind of the optimal temperature to be cooking at is about a 350 degree Fahrenheit. It's a good like mid-level temperature. Uh, anything higher than that uh, is going to burn the outside without cooking the inside. Anything lower is going to soak up a lot of extra oil in the food. It's a good idea to heat your oil on a mid-level temperature like a 6. So a few things to keep in mind whenever you're deep frying just for some safety concerns. Uh, never fill your pan more than halfway with oil. I always like to use a big heavy pan like this. It's gonna hold heat the most evenly. Um, always use a thermometer as well. We wanna keep as close to 350 as we can. Obviously when you put cold food in there, it's gonna drop the temperature drastically. So you just wanna keep an eye on that when you're cooking. And then, um, you know, obviously whenever you have food, there's gonna be a little bit of moisture in there. Oil and water don't mix, which is why you're able to get that like insanely great crust on the outside when you're deep frying, because it's such a quick and efficient way to cook. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So that's why you really want to be careful whenever you're deep frying, not to overfill the pan, um, not only for safety reasons, because you don't want the oil to boil over, but also you're going to get a much better crust and a much more efficient cook if you're not loading up the pan. And then something I always do whenever I'm deep frying is I'll keep like a lipped baking sheet or um, a really big platter or plate nearby with paper towels or even like a drying rack nearby. As soon as you lift your food from the hot oil, 
put it directly on those paper towels and it'll help draw out any extra moisture. Uh, I also like to sprinkle with a little bit of salt or sugar, depending on what you're cooking, sweet or savory. Um, both salt and sugar are desiccants and they'll help pull out any extra moisture. Again, just helping us to get that really great crust on the outside. Finally, let's talk about searing. We all love that delicious wood-fired flavor from a Traeger cooked steak. And now you can finish off that delicious crust from a scorching hot sear. You can sear at settings above eight. The induction cooktop even has a turbo setting, uh, which you could use if you're doing something that doesn't need as much cook time, like some scallops or shrimp, for instance. Keep in mind that at the same principle of heat transfer applies when searing. So covering the pan with a bunch of food is actually gonna make you steam the food, not sear it. As with deep frying, we're really looking for a dry crust whenever we're cooking, and that's really gonna help us get the best Maillard reaction. So even patting your steaks with a little bit of paper towels would help. Um, salting things ahead of time, again, that desiccant that's gonna pull out extra moisture. Anything you can do to get a really dry heat is gonna help you get an insanely good, dark, crispy crust on your food. And then when you're done cooking, you can actually turn off the induction hob three ways. One, take your pan off. The pan check mode will start again. It will read that there's no pan on there and it'll automatically turn off. Alternatively, you can press and hold like you would for the main controller, or you can turn it down, press lightly, and it'll also turn off. You can also check on the Traeger app to make sure that the unit is completely off as well. Thanks for tuning in. We're so excited to see the food that you cook on your Traeger induction.